Alright, so in today's video, I'm going to be giving you one tip for every single defender in the game of Rainbow Six Siege. This is year 7 season 2, so when year 7 season 3 comes out, make sure you look for my defender tier list when that new season comes out. And without further ado, let's get straight into the video. My biggest tip of smoke is to learn when to use both of his weapons effectively. The SMG-11 and shotgun combo are a very powerful combo, and they are the reinforcement that backs smoke's ability. So you want to be knowing when to take those close range gunfights with his shotgun, and when to whittle down at their health with their SMG-11. Especially with the fire rate that that thing has and only having 17 bullets, being very good at his shotgun, and being very good at positioning with your shotgun can win you a lot of rounds. Next up is Mute. One thing I do want to say with Mute is Mute can deny a lot of attacker utility, that be Lion Scans, Grimm's new gadget, Dokibi calls, jackal tracks, so if you are going to roam or you have teammates that are going to roam, you can give them a mute jammer nearby so that actually helps countering the roam clear. My next defender is castle, and with castle you want to stop putting barricades on windows and doorways. You want to start putting them on places where attackers cannot get to them. So windows in sight are very good, especially if the site extends beyond those windows. You can use these windows or doorways as cover, but you need to be making sure that these are out of the hands of attackers. So deep into site or on roams where you're able to protect these castle barricades instead of windows and doorways that lead directly to outside where they can just knife them for free. My tip with Pulse is be giving callouts. With Pulse, you have an infinite amount of information on where the attackers can and cannot be, and this is extremely powerful as it is uncounterable by the attackers. And you wanna be sharing this information with your teammates, especially as Pulse, if you don't have a Nitro, let's say you've just wasted it, you don't have the best gun for vertical play, so you wanna be telling your teammates where the enemies are so they can better refrag off of your information. My next defender is Doc, and as Doc, you are the only defender that can overheal unless you're not full HP as Thunderbird, right? So with Thunderbird, people like to heal from low, to immediately full health, but with Doc you can overstim yourself and you want to be using that to your advantage. With Doc, you want to be using overhealing more than you want to be using actual healing towards teammates because Thunderbird does that better. So you can use overhealing when you're about to take a gunfight, when you know your teammate's about to take a gunfight, and if you revive with a stim pistol it gets them to immediately 70 HP. So uh, very good for overstimming and I think you need to be using him to overstim more than to heal, especially with Thunderbird on the table. With Rook, Rook is really useless compared to Doc and Thunderbird, but if you're going to use him you need to be running the MP5 2x and you need to be spawn peeking. That is the only way you're going to get value out of Rook compared to somebody like Doc or Thunderbird. You need to be using the site correctly. That doesn't mean roam, but it means spawn peek near site and it's a lot easier on maps like Consulate or Outback where windows are directly near site, but you want to be using that 2x to its advantage, whether it be spawn peeking or holding long angles. My next defender is Capcan, and with Capcan, you want to be thinking about how attackers are looking at doorways. So if they're in a room and they're about to walk through a doorway, what side of the doorway are they going to be primarily looking at? And you want to put the EDD on the opposite side of that. Also, you want to be putting these EDDs at the lowest possible place on the doorway by looking down at the doorway and crouching, just to ensure that they can't crouch under them, or they don't see it as least as possible. Tachaka is the only counter in the game to Maverick. He can shoot his Shumika launchers through Maverick's holes, and Maverick can no longer get the bottom of the wall. Um, and he has a large majority of these fire bolts that can severely damage Maverick. So using this to counter Maverick by shooting fire in his holes is a very good use of Tachanka. With Jaeger, you want to be using your ADSs to cover as much things as possible. So if you have an ADS that covers five doorways and two windows, but also protects a player and a piece of utility, that's a lot better than an ADS that just covers one doorway and protects no pieces of utility. So you want to be thinking about exact placements with ADSs to cover the most amount of utility, especially if nobody is going to be grenading through a door. And you know that because you've been playing this game for long enough, you want to be putting these things on common grenade points. I go over this a lot in my Jaeger video, which I just released. I'll put that in the top right right here. And let's get on to the next defender. My next defender is Bandit, and Bandit tricking is 10 times easier with the buff they just gave to him. As Bandit, when you're Bandit tricking, you want to have your two batteries on the outside of the walls, and you want to be playing in the middle. That way you can easily put your shock wires on both of the walls when you're in the middle and your Bandit batteries aren't in the way. It just makes it 10 times easier and faster to Bandit trick, and those extra few milliseconds can be the difference between you dying to a Thermite charge and you saving the round's wall. My next defender is Frost. Now, Frost is very good to unsuspecting enemies, but but something they do suspect a lot of times is frost mats on staircases, frost mats on windows, and frost mats near doors. So something that you want to be thinking about is common vault places, right? Do they vault over couches? Do they vault over half walls? Do they vault over tables, right? And you can put welcome mats on the other side of vaultable locations, vaultable rotate, stuff like that, instead of just windows. Something that you can use and abuse on Valkyrie is pre-placed nitro traps. You put a Valkyrie cam somewhere on the map and you blow up a nitro under that Valkyrie camera that you have pre-placed that you can set off throughout anywhere in the map. This is extremely easy to do as it's hard to spot a Valk cam. And by the time they know the nitro's there, they're probably already dead anyways. With Caviera, if you headshot 
shot someone with your pistol, it actually downs them instead of killing them. This may be common knowledge, but it might want to make you switch to her shotgun instead of switching to her SMG because you already have a long range counterpart that can down enemies across the map, and the shotgun is very good for close range gunfights where your pistol may not be able to help you as much. Her SMG also has a terrible fire rate, so I do recommend you play the shotgun with Caviera and use headshot downs to your advantage with that pistol. Also a cool tip with her is her footsteps do counter jackal, I know that's pretty common knowledge as well, but if you didn't know that, whenever the jackal is about to ping you, you just activate your silent step and he can't track you. A tip with Echo is because his drones are no longer invisible, you can hide them in very small crevices of the map and then pop them out whenever they're needed. I have a bunch of examples on YouTube shorts that are down in a playlist below of very good yokai spots where you can hide them in cabinets, you can hide them in corners of the map, and then pop them out whenever they're needed and swing and get a kill off of a concussed enemy. A tip with mirror that's probably going to get patched soon is you can throw a nitro onto the mirror window from inside the mirror, and if anybody gets near the mirror, you can actually explode the nitro and it kill them on the other side. Like I said, it's probably going to get patched soon, but you can get a lot of free kills with nitro through the mirror. With Legion, you want to be swinging off of his goon mines. Instead of just holding them down and putting them in places of high attacker traffic areas just for information, you actually want to be swinging off of them. This is because they have a lot of debuffs and they can't sprint whenever you're in a gunfight with them, so it makes them a lot harder to exit engagements compared to when they don't have a goon mine in them. It's also very distracting, it puts a large scale green effect on their HUD, and it makes them a lot more stressed out, especially if they're in a gunfight with you. You have one of the best SMGs on defense, so make sure to abuse it. My tip for Ella is save a Grisma in your pocket especially if you're roaming. You set up Grismots in places where you think you're going to play and then the attackers might push a completely different area. Now especially if you run her shotgun, you could be limited in terms of how you can play and the gunfights you can take if you put yourself in bad positions, which is why having an Ella mine that you can throw at the enemy that can completely change the tide of a gunfight is so good for somebody with Ella's gun selection. A tip with Vigil is stop moving when your scan is active. Whenever you're using your ability as Vigil, white lines appear, but the white lines get smaller and smaller as the Vigil is farther and farther away. But if you're moving, the white lines actually get faster and taller. Now, if you're sprinting or you're shooting, then they can actually see exactly where you are. But if you sit still with Vigil, it makes it look like you're really far away due to there being any white lines at all. And they also can't hear where you're running on your visual scan. So if you're being droned and you have a visual scan sit completely still, it makes them think the room is completely clear. My next operator is Maestro, and something I do want to say is if you know they're going to rush, especially with Sens or Ying, a lot of the time you'll actually play Warden. And this is actually a better counter to that. His cams are completely smoke-proof. You can see through any types of smokes or blinds, and you can deny plants, you can get drones, a lot of stuff like that. Um, so Maestro is a lot more versatile, he has a better gun selection, and he's a lot more useful to the team as people can use his cams even when you're dead as opposed to Warden being all of that utility and rush denial gone as you die as well. So uh, if you want to deny a rush, especially a smoke plant rush, Maestro is 10 times better than Warden. The next operator is Alibi, and one thing I do want to say is you can use Alibi and all three of her clones to do really good spawn peaks. What I mean by this is you put all of your Alibi clones in a place you think they're going to go. Once they shoot that Alibi clone, you across the map can silently break the window and get free head clicks. I do this all the time on Canal when they try to push Sewer and I just get them from Map Room or whatever. Like there's a lot of places you can do this and they can't really do anything about it, especially if you know how to silently break a window. My tip with Clash is you want to be playing her like Monty and not like Blitz. A lot of people play her like Blitz where they try to go for frags by 360 spin bopping people. They try to play very aggressively and take a lot of space. But if you play her like Monty where you're just a solid shield that gives info and you're constantly a presence that needs to be dealt with, you can get a lot more value out of her than you would out of playing her like a fragger. My tip with Cade is if you know they're probably not going to go below and you have roamers below that are able to protect Cade Claws is start throwing Cade Claws below hard surfaces that protect walls. A good example of this is Red Wall and Cafe or Jacuzzi Wall in Clubhouse. You name it, you can make below Cade Electro Claws very easily. My tip with Mozzie is if you're in the drone phase, stop using your pest launchers to get drones. If you want good cameras that are able to be hidden, you can do that with Echo and you can do that with Valkyrie. Mozzie is a lot better suited to drone denial because he's able to roam and have drone denial as opposed to Mute who is a 3 armor and is better suited for other things and the versatility that he brings. With Mozzie, you can put all three of your pest launchers where you're roaming, they're unable to drone you and you don't even have to be there. You can apply something called Ghost Pressure which is a totally different video in itself. But yeah, just shoot drones in prep phase and then use your three pest launchers to get drones in the middle of the game 
or to just make your Rome presence even heavier. My tip with Warden is his glasses actually do prevent against any concussive state that comes from breaching charges. So if you're right next to a thermite breach or you're right next to a breaching charge or a fuse charge, any grenades, etc., not just, you know, smoke grenades or blind grenades, then you don't receive the effects from that. Also, any Gone 6 effects you don't receive as well, so a good plan that you can have is you can prone next to a wall that's about to be opened, you won't get any stun effects from that, and you can get a lot of free kills from people walking in or near the wall. With Goyo, his canisters last about 20 seconds, it might even be longer than that, I'm pretty sure it's just 20 seconds though, but his canisters last a very long amount of time, and you want to be saving those canisters for late round pushes or early round aggression. What do I mean by this? I mean if there's only 40 seconds left into the round, you can pop two Goyos and completely deny any entry into sight, and if they do go into sight, they're pressured by Goyo fire and are at a lower health state, but early round aggression is good too because if they're pushing you very heavily, you can pop that Goyo canister and it gives you 20 seconds to rotate to a different position or to fall off the defense entirely. Very, very powerful and is honestly one of the more underrated operators in the game. A tip with the mine is you can actually throw these things outside and make attackers grenade themselves. It's very easy to do. A great example is study balcony on Villa. You can throw these on the couches or on the balcony and they're not going to be looking on the balcony they're standing on whenever they repel in. They're just going to be looking at that door and that window uh, so you can actually catch a lot of attackers lacking with outside bomb eye magnets just like you used to be able to do with outside valkyrie cameras my tip with oryx is stop using him just because there's a hatch heavy map I know the ability to jump hatches is very, very tempting, but you can use his Reemba Dash to actually traverse the map extremely quickly. So if you're a menace on Rome, you get a kill, I would immediately use his Reemba Dash to go to a different side of the map and be applying pressure there. And you can also run out with his Reemba Dashes extremely easily as well. So constantly applying pressure to different sides of the map. Once they drone you, once you get a kill, once they spot you, whatever, you immediately leave and be a nuisance to the other side of the map is a very, very good way to play Oryx. As Malusi, you can put a lot of gadgets with her that complement her gadget. A great example is Thorn, a great example is Barbed Wire, a great example is you just swinging off of her gadgets in general, Lesion Mines, stuff like that. Uh, these essentially work as proximity alarms, but there's just one more of them and they slow you, um, as they are, you know, just shootable. So. Banshees in and of themselves are not very strong, but it's what you pair with them, like swinging off of them or utility that make them extremely strong. My tip with Aruni is make sure that every Aruni gate you can place is within arm's reach of another player on your team or you, because you want to be able to reactivate those Surya gates. If they're only able to burn one piece of utility, then you could have had the same job done with Wamai, but better. So using these things in a way that's reactivatable and close to sight so that it's late round when they're being burned is very good because they tend to have less utility late round and they apply a lot more pressure when they're reactivatable and they're in the late round compared to early round. My tip with Thunderbird is you want to be placing these Thunderbird stations in very hard to reach parts of the map. My reason for saying this is because people need to be able to go to the Thunderbird stations, but the Thunderbird stations not being in the way. You don't want to heal when you're on 2 HP on accident when you have a teammate that's on 50 HP. You also don't want to be accidentally giving sound calls to the attackers whenever you heal in a 1vx situation, but you want them to still be easily accessible. So putting them in corners of rooms instead of the middle of rooms or putting them in rooms adjacent to you are very, very good because they still make you have to go get them if you want them, but they're not too out of the way to where you have to be in danger to go get them. My tip with Thorn is you can hide these Thorn Razor Bloom shells in floorboards and in walls because of the 50 cal SMG you have. You can actually break floorboards very easily and hide the Razor Bloom shells in the floorboards. The only thing is they're very easy to see because of the bright lights on them, so you can put barbed wire on top of the floorboards on top of your Razor Bloom shell, and now they're virtually impossible to see, and you also have barbed wire slowing the enemy down, making it a lot harder for them to escape your Razor Bloom shell. My tip for a zombie is you want to use these Kiba barriers to cover rotates. So rotates are very susceptible to many angles. The rotate to red and cache is very susceptible to windows, staircases, condor, etc. Same thing for coastline rotate. There's a lot of ways that rotates can be shot and you want to use these barriers to protect your rotates so that you can go in between sites a lot easier, especially in the late round. It's extremely, extremely powerful. But with all of that out of the way, that is pretty much it for the video, guys. Don't forget to sub. I post content every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'm only going to start posting more and more as the months go on, and I'm going to get to the point where I'm posting every single day in Rainbow Six Siege. My content is growing extremely fast. I post videos on the Astralis R6 channel as well if you want to go check them out. And with that out of the way, that's it for the video, guys. See you next time.